Hi, I'd like to give you an overview of electrochemical cells. Now we have two categories of electrochemical cells. The first one is called voltaic or galvanic. It's the same thing, just two names for the same thing. That means that our potential is positive. Uh, we have a positive standard reduction potential, E value, um, which means we love this. It releases energy. Really good example of this, batteries. All of our batteries um, are going to be a voltaic cell. Now the opposite of that is called an electrolytic cell that has a negative E value, uh, which means that it requires energy. In order for uh, this cell to function, you have to put energy into it. Uh, so why would we want to do that? Well, here are a couple of examples. Electroplating, maybe we'd like to plate a metal. They do that um, with copper from the mountains to get copper for, um, for pennies, to cover pennies. Um, so to plate a metal. Um, another one is recharging a battery. Uh, we plug in our phones and that is, it acts as an electrolytic cell that the electrons will go the opposite direction, that the energy forces the electrons to do this negative potential right here. Okay, so here we have our two half reactions. We're going to have silver in one cell and copper in the other cell. Uh, the first thing that I always have my students do is to identify everything. What's reduced, what's oxidized, the anode, the cathode. So it's really labeling everything. Very similar to balancing our chemical reactions, we start with oxidation numbers. So um, silver is a plus one. Silver solid is a zero. Going from a plus one to a zero, I'm down by one. Now I'm at a perfect zero. That means that we gained one electron. And check it out, this is written as a reduction, uh, half reaction, just like you see on standard reduction potential tables. Um, so if this is gaining electron, GER, gain electrons reduction, I'll write it over here, this is reduction. So this half reaction is gaining electrons. Now, over here on our copper, we're going from a zero to a plus two, zero to plus two, I'm at perfect zero, now I'm down by two electrons, that means that it loses two electrons. So we're going to lose two electrons. Um, Leo, lose electrons oxidation. This cell is oxidation. It is being oxidized. Um, another clue on this is you can see how it's written that in the half reaction, the two electrons are on the product side. So that atom lost two electrons, and we now have this ion with those two electrons. Now, what's happening here? It's, it's really pretty cool. Um, so the silver ion is going into silver solid. We've put, these are called electrodes, an electrode. We've put electrodes into solutions and you have to have a solution that has the same ion as the electrode. For example, this is a strip of metal that's silver. So that's pure silver and it's sitting in a solution of silver nitrate. Over here, I have a pure strip of copper and that copper is sitting in a solution of copper nitrate. Now notice, um, silver nitrate is a one-to-one -one mole ratio, AgNO3. So for every one silver nitrate that I dissolve, there's one silver ion, one nitrate ion. Be careful on this. This is a copper two nitrate. So I was careful for every one um, copper nitrate that I dissolve, I have one copper ion and two nitrate ions. That's something that a professor um, or the AP test and IB test would want um, to see that you know how to properly dissociate the correct number of ions. Okay, so we're going from the silver ion to the Ag+. I'm going to put another one in here. So here's another nitrate ion so you can see it. So here's literally what's happening. This silver ion is coming over to the silver electrode and it's attaching, it's gaining an electron and it attaches. So what happens is you have the ions that are in the solution attach, 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 and it actually looks like this electrode is growing. It kind of gets a little longer. Honestly, it looks fuzzy to me. When I look at it, it looks kind of fuzzy. Um, so that's what's happening with the metal on the ion on the reduction side. On the oxidation side, notice it's going from solid to ion. So literally what's happening here is we're going to have a little copper metal that's solid and it's going to go from the copper metal into the solution and become an ion, the Cu2+. So because of that, what happens is the metal becomes the, um, the ion, it looks like it's shrinking. 
it looks like it's dissolving. So over time, this is what it would look like. You kind of have this jagged edge and it actually gets smaller. Now, a common question that will be asked, is the mass changing for this total half reaction? Is the mass changing for this total half reaction? What do you think? The answer is no. You still have the same number of atoms in there. They're just changing phases, changing from an ion to solid, changing from a solid to an ion. So the mass stays the same. The mass stays the same. Now, the electricity part of this, the current. Okay, what makes all of this happen? Why is this becoming a solid? Why is that becoming an ion? It's the potential difference between the silver and the copper. That's what's going to push um, electrons in essence. So watch what happens with the electrons. This part is so cool. This is the electrochemistry um, where electrons are transferring. It's exciting. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, so when the copper goes from solid to ion, it lost two electrons. Those two electrons will bump into this wire. Now, sometimes students have this idea that the electrons bump into the wire and they go wee like a slide and they come over here. That's not what happens. The two electrons will bump into this wire and it creates a chain reaction that goes bump, 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 bump. And these two electrons right here that will bump over here are going to bring two of the silver ions from ion to a solid. And that's how it grows. The electrons transfer, transfer from the oxidation to the reduction, and those electrons are going to be taken in by the ion and changed to a solid phase. Pretty cool. And again, what pushes that? Potential difference, electromotive force, is the voltage that's going to um, push that. Okay, <laughs> so there's more to understand with this. Um, we are changing the charge in each of these solutions, okay? So we have to have a salt bridge. This salt bridge keeps a, new, a neutral charge for each solution. Now, here is another misconception on the part of students. They will think that somehow this copper will go through the salt bridge and react with the silver these atoms never touch. Let me say that again. These atoms never touch. The wire is what's going to allow the electrons to move, okay? Here, the salt bridge, it puts ions into the solution. So these, solution, these um, ions will never ever react. These two right here are never going to touch each other, okay? They stay in their own half reactions. So what happens with the salt bridge? quickly and if you have more questions on this I have a video that you can watch on the salt bridge um, so we are losing positive charge which will automatically attract positive charge from our salt bridge our salt bridge is KCl so this is going to attract K plus all right as I lose that positive charge I get a buildup of negative so automatically a positive will be attracted to those extra nitrates so for every one sodium, or excuse me, one silver that I lose is going to attract the one potassium to keep this neutral. Now, over here, um, as we gain this copper two plus, this is going to become positively charged. And so for every one copper ion, it has a two plus charge, it will naturally attract two chloride ions, and that will balance it out to keep both of those half reactions neutral. Now, some labeling on this, and I'm going to teach you a couple of silly, um, uh, what, little sayings <laughs> to help you remember this. Reduction. Reduction, um, site that's reduced is considered positive, and we also call it the cathode. Okay, so how to help you remember this. Um, I tell my kids to think about a little kitty cat that has red paws, like little socks that look red, its fur is red. Remember, red cat pause. And there is your reduction cathode positive. Whichever side is reduced automatically is called the cathode and it gets the positive sign. Now, let's come over here to our oxidation. The side that's oxidized, it is always called the anode. And a little side note, I had told you that these are generically called electrodes. Well, we could be very specific and say this is the cathode 
this is the anode. This is the positive and that's your negative. Um, again, sorry, the, um, whatever's oxidized is called the anode and it gets the negative sign. Oh, silly way to remember this. Um, I want you to <laughs> remember this. An ox says neg. Really quick, where this came from, my very first year of teaching, um, I told my students, hey, I want you to remember this, that a cow says moo, but an ox, like a great big ox animal, says neg. So for two weeks, they thought that was hilarious. They would come into my room and instead of um, just saying, hey, Mrs. Love, they pretended like they were ox and they'd go neg, neg, and then they'd laugh, 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 and I'm like, oh, you're so cute. So <laughs> that little story helps you remember an ox says neg, anode oxidation negative, okay? To help you label that. Now, you need to show the direction of the electrons. Electrons always flow from anode to cathode, always, okay? Always, I don't care if it's electrolytic or if it's voltaic. Um, electrons always flow from anode to cathode. And how I remember that is they go from A to C. So on this, I'm going to show the direction. They're going to go from my anode to the cathode. And this totally makes sense. The oxidized side, the anode, loses electrons. So the, the electrons flow to the side that gains electrons, the reduced cathode. Um, so that makes sense, that the electrons always flow from anode to cathode. Now, the last thing that I would like to show you is how to finish off with a balanced redox reaction and one final voltage. What is the voltage for this reaction? Um, so I'm going to take my two half reactions, we're going to balance them and add our um, standard reduction potentials. Okay, so we are going to have this silver plus one electron yields silver solid, and then I've got copper yields copper two plus plus two electrons. Um, well, to balance this, I have one electron here, two right there. Let's multiply this by a two. Okay, multiply that by a two. Um, now, check this out, our reduction potentials. This E value is 0.799, and this one, E value, is negative 0.337. Remember, so, so important, when you multiply a half reaction, you do not multiply the potential because the potential is a ratio, so you don't multiply it. This, even though I multiply this by a two, is still going to be the 0.799. Now we can add our half reactions. Notice the two electrons are going to cancel, so our balanced uh, reaction for this electrochemical cell will be two silver, and that's your plus sign, the ion, aqueous, plus the copper, which is solid, yields two moles of silver solid, plus the one mole of the copper aqueous. Now, we added the half reactions. All we have to do is add the potentials. So if I add these potentials, I'm gonna put this over here for you. The standard reduction potential is going to be 0.462 volts. And that's what we would read right up here, 0.462 volts. That would be the potential of this battery, of this electrochemical cell. Okay, so big overview of how an electrochemical cell works. Um, gaining electrons, the reduced side is going to plate. Uh, losing electrons, the, um, the oxidized side, the electrode is going to shrink because the solid becomes the ion. Watch the video on the salt bridge if you need that. Memorize these two sayings so that you can label everything. And then if you need to, watch the video on balancing half reactions and watch the video on determining standard reduction potential um, for, um, for half reactions, if you, if you need that help, if you, if you don't know how to do that. Okay, putting it all together, there you have it. One last thing, everything would be opposite in an electrolytic cell. If I switch this to oxidation, switch this to reduction, this would become the anode, that would become the cathode, and the electrons would flow from the anode oxidation to the cathode if we flipped both of these. The standard re reduction potential is a conservation of energy. For the electrolytic, it would simply be negative 0.462. So here, the amount of energy that's supplied 
Um, there's your potential, 0.462, but if I flip it, if I put energy into it, I'd have to put in exactly 0.462, that negative 0.462 to reverse this. So this would be our battery working. And then if I put this much energy into it, that voltage into it, that would be like charging the battery, the electrolytic cell, just opposite. So everything on this flipped would be your electrolytic cell. Okay, good work, so proud of you. Have a nice day. Again, all the support videos for this are under the playlist Redox Electrochemistry. Thank you.